Hello everybody. Swamp Fox News coming at you. Um, got a heartbreaking story here. I'm sad to have to bring you this kind of stuff, but it just goes to show once again, we keep talking about where where is the protect and serve in law enforcement? You know, they hire the stupidest people that don't think they have no forethought of thinking or or being able to think. If they had a good thought, it would bust their head in two. Um, it's totally ridiculous. This man is a hero. He saved countless lives. We don't know. He he. The man killed a police officer. And then he went and got another gun, started shooting up cars and other things, and, and a bystander with a gun shot and killed him. The police came up, didn't say a word, just shot and killed the guy who just saved people's lives. And these people are who some, even some of my dear friends are, oh man, they're good, they're good, they're good, they're here to protect the service. Well, how are they here to protect the service when they're shooting and killing us? When they're shooting and killing people who saved lives. This man had already shot and killed a cop. The bystander seen it, grabbed his gun, shot and killed the man who shot and killed the cop. Cop pulls up, don't say a word, don't pull his gun, don't say, don't pull his gun and say, hey, freeze, drop the gun, anything, just pulls up and shoots him. The man has not been arrested for killing this man. Why not? Because the narrative is backwards. See, the man that was killing the guy had a shotgun and an AR-15. Okay, the guy that killed the cop. But what they don't want you to know, why the mainstream media won't tell you, is that the man that killed the perpetrator was a bystander with a gun with a second amendment right to have it and if he would not have had his gun if he would not have been in the right place at the right time more people would have died that's the whole reason why we need the second amendment and why everyone should be able to carry in every state it would solve a lot less crime and a lot less problems you can make no mistake about that anyway watch the video I warn you this is a disturbing video some of you may find this graphic disturbing viewer discretion is advised it was what looked to be a normal monday until a shooting in old town arvada led to the killing of beloved arvada police officer gordon beasley and 40 year old johnny hurley and as of friday we now have a more detailed look at what happened that day a timeline laid out by police at 12.49, the shooter's brother called police to warn them, saying Ronald was going to, quote, do something crazy. Officer Beasley and another officer responded to Troikey's apartment at 108, but couldn't find him. Nine minutes later, police got a call about a suspicious person in the Old Town Square. And that's what brings us here, 131. Police say that's Troikey pulling into this parking lot. Officer Beasley shows up and walks through an alley towards the square. That's him at the top of the screen. But you can see the shooter grabs what police say is a shotgun and runs towards Officer Beasley, even passing people who just happen to be walking by. The shooter gets to Officer Beasley, and we'll pause the video here. Police say Troikey shot Beasley twice. The shooter then goes back to his truck and grabs what police say was an AR-15. It does not show what happened next, but police say Hurley shot the gunman. When officers got on scene, they say they found Hurley holding the suspect's gun. Police now confirm an officer shot Hurley. Still, police again calling Hurley a hero Friday for stopping the shooter and saving lives. Now he's a hero, but yet you shot and killed him. You didn't even stop long enough to see what the guy was holding the gun. Was he pointing at anybody? Was he shooting anybody at the time? No. The man just saved lives. But this stupid cop that they only make go to schooling for six months, might as well be six days, as far as all the laws they're supposed to know and learn. These cops should have to be college educated in criminal justice. And they should have to be continuously courses for about five years where they're continuously taking courses all the time, sort of like doctors. They should also have to have malpractice insurance, just like doctors. 
They, we need to get rid of qualified immunity. As long as cops are allowed to do the things that they're doing, and they got qualified immunity, they won't stop. Watch this next video. Tell me what you think. ...who she says broke her wrist during an alleged fender bender investigation. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jason Brown. I'm Ann Trujillo. This is the same trooper who was recently fired for reportedly pointing a gun at another driver. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez obtained a copy of the dash cam. Now you hear what they said. This is a cop who had already been fired from one department for pointing a gun at a driver. Okay? It's... It's unbelievable. They let them, they'll fire them at one place or let them resign. They won't take their certificate to be a cop and they'll let them go rain terror on other people in other cities and states. It's unbelievable how they cover for each other. This is the biggest blue line. This is the biggest gang in the world. Police are the biggest gang, well most funded, organized gang in the world. The Bloods and the Crips don't have nothing on the police. And the corruption, make no mistake. In video, and talk to the victim's attorney. Dash cam video shows former state trooper Wesley Dakin chasing after Michelle Principe and throwing her to the ground, allegedly breaking her wrist. This is what officers do when you tell them there's no consequences for your actions. Right. What happened November Meaning. 13th, 2018. A man called police. Meaning qualified immunity, just like that lawyer said. When you don't have no actions for the crimes that you commit, you're going to keep doing them. Just like if you're a kid. If, if you know that you can continue to sneak out the house and be gone to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, mom and dad catch you, you come in the door, and they say you're going to be in trouble next time you do it, then you don't get in no trouble, then you do it again. Next time you come in, you get caught again. You're going to keep doing it. You know, it's the same, same thing here. They're, they have, even when they do, even when they do, and I'm going to show some arrests. And how about the George Floyd guy got 22 and a half years. So he got 22 and a half years. But think how much money the taxpayers had to pay for that case. We paid for his lawyers. He committed the crime. Why did the taxpayer, I don't say, I say we, I, would, I don't live in the state, but the taxpayers of that state paid for his lawyers. You understand? They paid for his defense. Now they're going to pay to house him in prison for 22 and a half years. Okay? It's total, the whole system is rigged. And it's always the person, the citizen, whatever you want to call yourself, one of the people, it's always the tax cattle the tax man, the person who's out there paying into the system, that pays. Always. It's always that situation. Now this poor lady did, didn't hit nobody. They never proved she did anything wrong. She's suing the guy now because he broke her wrist. Check it out. Jason reported that a vehicle with a trailer hitch backed into his girlfriend's car, leaving a golf ball sized dent in the bumper. <coughs> the dent, if there was one, apparently popped out when the weather changed. The lawsuit states that they had lied about the damage, saying he saw black paint on the trailer hitch, though he had earlier written that the damaged car was white. I didn't hit anybody. Principe now, was furious. he wrote that the car was white. I guess he forgot that and then said, oh, there was black paint on the bumper, so, on the, on the ball hitch. So, for the fact that he lied, right, once he lies, that's he broke the law. He lied under oath because when you are filling out them all that paperwork, he is swearing under oath that what he's saying in that statement is true. But there's no recourse. They don't go back and say, well, you lied about this, so you're going to prison. Do you know how many people in, are in prison right now in the United States for lying under oath? And you get one to 20 years in prison. I don't know if y'all realize that or not. You can get from one year all the way up to 20 years in prison for lying under oath in the United States. Did you know that? But yet cops get away with it. Politicians get away with it every day. Congressmen, senators, governors, you name it. They get away with it. But the everyday person, you make one mistake and say, oh, no, and you just might have forgot something. Oh, no, it's the end of the world. And I guess it's so funny to watch these cop shows a lot of times when the cop will say, yeah, well, you're a criminal, 
<laughs> you know, talking to, to the perpetrator or what, and I keep thinking, well, so are you. Y'all kill three people on average a day in the United States and all the laws that y'all break continuously. Like like myself pulling over um, the Charleston County Sheriff's Deputy out of his jurisdiction with no blue lights, no, um, no uh, flashers on, and, his, and he did get suspended for three days without pay, supposedly. And, uh, and he had to take a safe driving course, supposedly. And, uh, he's under, and he was on probation, supposedly. But uh, 30 mile an hour over in the speed limit, that's, you usually go to jail for that. But you also get six points off your driver's license. Your insurance goes up. See, he didn't have to pay like a normal citizen three days off with no pay. He got a little vacation. You think that bothered him? And he's a ticket writer. That man should not be able to write anybody tickets after he was caught on video speeding at over 100 miles an hour in a 60 mile an hour zone, 40 miles over the speed limit, which again, usually 30 miles an hour gets you put in jail, could get you put in jail um, <laughs> in most states. The man had, he had really, he didn't have to pay for it. You know what I mean? I don't think he paid for it. But, you know. Yeah, regardless, this is what these people do. They think they own us. They think that badge and gun lets them have all rights that we don't have. Curious about receiving a citation and cussed at the officer. After waiting for nearly 30 minutes, she walked up to his car, knocked on the window, and said she was leaving, then began walking back to her car. Dakin chased her down and apparently knocked her down. There's no law enforcement reason to do that. He was simply angry that she disrespected him, and, 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 and in response, he attacked her. These photos show bruises on Principe's right arm. Earlier this week, two and a half years after this incident with Principe, Denver 7 learned Dakin was fired for his alleged involvement in a menacing case at 10th and Sheridan. This Crime Stoppers alert indicates he'd apparently pointed a gun at another driver while off-duty last April. He was charged with two counts of felony menacing. The Attorney General's office. But if they would have took care of him the first time, he wouldn't have had a chance to menace somebody on the second time. It's the cover-up. The government cover-up. The uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours cover-up. The judges are corrupt. The, all the politicians are corrupt. They all work together. And most public pretenders are exactly that. Man, they just want you to plead guilty. You you better off <laughs> don't have, uh, you know, uh, a man who is his own lawyer is a fool, has a fool for a client. We've heard that, but you're, if you got a public defender, you basically are defending yourself because 90% of the time, 99% of the time, right when you meet him, they say, plead guilty. Let's work out a plea. Even if you ain't guilty and you know it, they're not really, they're not there to work for you. There's no money in it for them, you know. They're they're the bottom of the barrel of lawyers usually, so you know, they they can't get a job in a real firm, so they go to the public defender's office. Or actually I think a lot of them actually have to start out there, but, but a lot of them stay because they can't get a job in a, a real law firm. This has known about this for a long time. What happened uh, with the two felonies that Trooper DeCan has right now could have been avoided if the Attorney General's office had not been hiding the misconduct of this ban officer. The AG's office not commenting about Principe's lawsuit, Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Of course they're not gonna they're not gonna comment on it. They know they're wrong. Breaking news here at home, a 29-year-old Detroit police officer is facing charges of involuntary manslaughter and willful neglect of duty in a crash that killed a well-known lawyer. Prosecutors say that she was responding to a call in February, ran a red light, and hit and killed this man, Clifford Woodards. Our Victor Williams is following the story for us. He joins us now. Now, okay, she had her blue lights on and this, that, and other, but she was doing well over 55 miles an hour in a residential zone, which is usually 30 to 35 and um, and of course 
she has to slow down or stop at each intersection to make sure cars ain't crossing because they may not hear her. But like most cops, they're like, well, you know what? I got my blue lights on, so if they don't hear or see me, oh well. Oh well. At least she is being charged with manslaughter. Involved. Live this afternoon. And Victor, this officer's facing oh. some pretty serious prison time. And I don't see how it's involuntary manslaughter. When you're driving the weapon, you know that you should stop in between uh, intersections to make sure no one's coming, even though you got your blue lights on. That's their policy. You're supposed to stop at each intersection, make sure no cars are coming back and forth. So, it's why is it in, in, involuntary? She voluntarily drove that car like she did and chose not to stop. But no, rules for thee and not for me. Pretty serious charges, pretty serious prison time, pretty serious just all across the board. And these charges have really been a long time coming, but now this officer has to face the legal consequences for her alleged role in this man's death on that unfortunate night. Now, 29-year-old Tierra Iris Funderburg has been charged with involuntary manslaughter along with one count of willful neglect of duty for her role in the death of attorney and popular radio host Cliff Woodard. The investigation shows the officer was driving at least 50 miles per hour, running through a red light when she crashed into Cliff's Lexus sedan while getting off of I-96. We're told she was responding to a call for backup and had her lights and sirens activated when the accident happened on West Chicago and Jeffrey Service Drive back in February. Funderburg now faces up to 16 years in prison, 15 for involuntary manslaughter, and another year for willful neglect of duty. She, however, has yet to be arraigned on these charges. We're told, however, that that should be happening sometime. Now, why? Oh, they have the charges. Why hasn't she been arraigned on them? You can make no mistake. As a one of the people, one of the citizens, whatever you want to call yourself, one of the sheep, one of the tax cattle, whatever, you would be sitting in jail right now wondering how you're going to get the bail money to get out. You wouldn't be sitting wondering when you're going to be arraigned. See, that's another part of that blue line gang privilege. They really want to do everything they can to keep her actually from going to jail. So the longer they prolong it with whatever they're waiting on, who knows? They're going to do it, but when? Why, why is she perk walked like we would be and it's in the next morning's newspaper? What, what are they waiting on? Oh, that's right. She had a gun and a badge. She's part of the Blue Line Privilege Gang, and they're trying to figure out a way to get her out of it. I see, I see, I see. And possibly this afternoon and coming up later on at five we're going to be talking to one of Cliff's closest friends about her reaction to this officer now being charged. Reporting live from DPD's headquarters, Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Back Victor, you. thank you for the update. All right, I'm going to leave y'all with this. Um, until qualified immunity is abolished, the police have nothing to fear. They know that 99% of the time they're going to get away with the crimes that they commit against us, um, that their blue brothers and sisters are going to cover for them. The district attorneys, as you see in these videos, are going to cover for them, and so on right on down the road. So we have to work on abolishing qualified immunity across the board. Make them start with getting uh, malpractice insurance, just like doctors have to have. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. Please share this video with everyone. Give it a thumbs up. I love you all. I hope God blesses each and every one of you and helps you have a prosperous life. Watch your back and take care.